Welcome back to Cigar Time, your friendly Tuesday night show all about cigars. And we have an esteemed panel here today. On my right, we have Rob. Hello, everybody. And to his right, we have Paul. Hello. And to his right, we have Scott. And to his right, we have the lovely Miss Tia. Hi. And uh, Miss Caroline is here joining us today, and she's going to be presenting us with our first cigar. Nice. All right. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. I like her outfit. You like her outfit? I do. Thank you. They should make them like Jeff Lemmon. Am I getting through? I was kind of so. looking at. I was kind of looking at the cigars. They should. Well, I really think it's well, neat you're... that she matches the cigar. Oh, they're they're thank you. Oh, very... you stopped, Paul. Oh, you got it. Never mind. I'm sorry. Oh, her outfit is very slim. It is now, very slim. Now, why is there a six cigar on there? For a mystery smoker. A mystery smoker. Oh yeah. Mystery smoker, everybody. Do tell. All right, you better go take care of them, or him, or her, or uh, whoever. Uh, it. it. <laughs> Well, I think it's time for Miss Tia to tell us about our first cigar. Our first cigar is the Flor de las Andillas, which is named after the Andillas Islands. The wrapper, the binder, and the filler are all Nicaraguan, which makes it, guys, Nicaraguan with Puro. The yeah. sizes are a Bellicoso, Robusto, Toro, and my favorite, a Toro Gordo. The taste is notes of nutmeg, white pepper, and just enough strength without overpowering your palate. So, what's the first topic? Well, I think before we go to the first topic, I just want to remind everybody to take off the footband. Really? Yeah, good idea. Oh, you have to remind people of that? Band. It will change the taste of the cigar. You sure? Probably should not be smoked. It definitely yeah. changed it. I, I thought it enhanced it a little bit. Right. Look, I brought my own band. punch today, so nobody cool. has to cry about cool. it. Cool, like very nice. Cigar first. Our, <laughs> first topic, our first topic today is going to be, what does body strength and flavor mean? Well, I think uh, Scott, you're a, you're a flavor and body guy, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> my body's much different. Yes, it is. It's much smaller. He's got that myrtle on. <laughs> Are you smoking like diet cigars? Yes, yes. yes. light cigars. I'm gonna say that all show. Um, body strength and flavor. And I think flavor, pretty much, and uh, strengths uh, speak for themselves. Um, where a lot of people get mixed up is in the body. Um, and what body really refers to is, I guess, the smoke and how it actually fills and hits all the different parts of your mouth. Um, whereas strength is how, obviously, how strong the cigar is, or what we refer to as a fuller cigar. And then flavor really means what it tastes. But I think a lot of people get mixed up between strength and body. And I think we all refer to, when we, when we talk about a cigar being full body, I think we all still mean that it's a strong cigar. Right. Do you agree? Yeah, I, yeah, I think so. And a lot of that plays to uh, how much nicotine is in the cigar. The strength does, yeah. Strength, yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. Well, you know, speaking of nicotine, is is the Lajero part of the plant contain? Is that the one that contains more of the nicotine? Yes, yeah. it does. Cool, cool. The in, double Lajero, in, in forget fact, about it. Once upon a time, uh, Carlito Fuente announced to the world at large that as far as he was concerned, nicotine equals flavor. And the more nicotine there is, the more flavor you're going to get. That's interesting. Really? Yeah, very That's interesting. Said. Huh. And it's, it's cool, back to the body, is that they, they use different parts of the tobacco plant, um, the, the seco, the volato, and the lajero, and you'll feel those uh, in different parts of your mouth. And this is a lot where the body comes from. I notice oftentimes when I smoke a Don Pepin cigar, uh, any of the brand doesn't matter, but his 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 cigars t tend to have a very identifying quality to them. When you first light them up, there's a, a rush of spice. Yes, yes, yes absolutely. very much. And then about a quarter in or so, they s tend to mellow out. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. that's very much his style as a blender. He mm. looks for ways yeah. to kick you up at the beginning, and then settle down. But that makes me want to put the cigar down. You know, when it's too much in the beginning, it's like you got to get by that. You got to get by that. Past it, I yeah. know. Is that it's as hard. much as it, it's Is that as much as that? It's blended like that, or is it also just a lot of a lot of, a lot of Nicaraguan cigars or cigars made with Nicaraguan tobacco? You get that also, no, or does he specifically blend it? He blends it, he blends it on it, purpose yeah. that way. In fact, uh, about two years ago, Don Pepin um, first started using Ecuadorian tobacco. Mm -hmm. And specifically, what he was looking for was Ecuadorian Sumatra, which can be very spicy, because he wanted that spice hit at the beginning. Mm. I don't like that. 
That's probably why I don't like Dom's second cigar. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, 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 it's not a taste. Thing. That's yeah. why I. That's probably why I do like. Really? Yeah, I don't, I, mean, like getting, I don't like getting hit in the face in any sort of cigar. I like to build up and okay. then yeah. mm -hmm. and then that's enjoy it that way. Fair yeah. enough. That's why they do that's make true. strawberry in addition to vanilla true. and chocolate. And another cool thing is and tutti, tutti another tutti. cool thing about this is one of the few. This is a, a sun grown wrapper. It's right. a Nicaraguan, but and it's also a sun grown. And that, that, that does change the flavor slightly. Really? So that helps a lot, too. And the band. And the band. And the band. Oh, you know I like the band. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> How sexy the band I is. Kind of like, yeah, I kind right. of assume that. I kind of assume that. A man and a woman on there? Thing. Oh, I love it. Okay. Well, take, go take a look real closely uh -huh. at the insignia inside the box of a uh, uh, Costa Rey. Oh. You, you'll, you'll, when really? you see it, you'll understand what I'm saying. <laughs> Is that an R-rated insignia? It is pretty much an R-rated, but no, you know, they've been doing it for a hundred years and nobody really picks up on it because it's artwork. Yeah. Of course. Or a work of art. Something like that, yeah. So you guys well, know. speaking of works of art, don't we have some upcoming events? We I, do. I think yeah. Scott had something to say first. Yep. Yeah. Oh. oh, yeah, I was, I was... <laughs> oh, sorry. I was actually going to ask you guys, what do you think about the strength of, like, I know we're going to review the cigar flavors and otherwise, but the topic is strength. It's, it's mellowed bodies. a little bit now. Has it? It has for me a little it bit. It definitely started out mm -hmm. spicy, and it's I, I'm getting it's, it's sweet right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm getting that sweet taste too. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's got a very sweet finish to it, mm -hmm. and I would I would call this no more than medium at, at, at the this strongest. Is, I think this is one of Pepin's milder. Wow. Yeah, yes. exactly. Save that yes. for the yeah. Save it for the review. Well, let's be clear. Right. This is not branded as a Pepin cigar. No. No. Well, no. my father. And my, my. Well, yeah, father. my father. My father's cigar company. Yeah. Yes. So if it's my father's cigar, it must be the son. From the daughter? Yeah. Although it's my father's cigar company. Timing. I mean, he's the best timing. of blender now. Yeah. yeah. Pepin spends most of his, he's really, he's on the growing end of the business now. Well, he's, he's turned over, and he's I guess, out in Yanni. Field, like Isn't his daughter in there? Out in the field, yeah. field. Yeah. Yeah. You stole your line, Paul. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Are we ready isn't, to talk about Isn't the daughter in, in she makes? Yeah, yeah she's, she's in the La too. Buena, yeah. which I, I think is a very good cigar. I like that. You know what? I like that cigar, too. I really do. The new one that just came out. No, the La Duena. It's been a few years now. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah a year. Two, about a year. year. Came out last year. Was it? Yeah. yeah right, wow. I think it came out right around the same time this one came out. Okay. Cool. Are we ready to talk about the event? Sure. sure. Okay. We, got the, uh, uh, we have an event with a number of our stores with Alec Bradley. Um, it is going to be on... Oh, I'm going to make sure I get this right. The 15th and 16th of October. Is that right? November. 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 Yeah, it's already <laughs> passed. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Um, and it's going to be in our Horsham store from 11 to 3. We'll have it in Colmar. These are both on Friday from 4 to 8. Then we're going to switch over to Saturday. We'll be in Phoenixville from 11 to 3. And then our Oxford Valley store from 4 to 8. We'll have lots of specials. Um, you'll get, get to meet the, uh, the rep from Alf Bradley. He's cool. Yeah, he is. He's Jonathan, cool. yeah, he's a cool guy. Yeah. I think they have a lot of great cigars. Too. Yeah, they do. I really like the A lot of swag. I, I, I'm really a lot of swag. Oh, I like that swag. And a lot of good yes. deals. Yeah. Alex Bradley, we are going to bring some really good deals. And their boxes are cool. look awesome. Yep. Yeah, I got some bands. bands. And their bands. bands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can't forget the bands. <laughs> Never can forget the bands. Yeah. You know, bands are make her dance. I had to say that. <laughs> well, as many of you listeners over the month, and now viewers over the last few weeks have uh, uh, said to us, you really enjoy the segment of Paul in the factory or Paul in the field. Well, we're going to bring him in from the field today, and we're going to put him in the factory where he's going to talk about. Well, what I'm going to talk about today is a bunch of stuff, literally. A bunch? I oh, like that. Oh. Oh. Really cool. We're going nice. to talk about bunching. Uh, if you remember, in previous weeks, we talked about growing the tobacco, we talked about sorting it, we talked about fermenting it, and we talked about blending it. So now you have an assortment of tobaccos that are the formula for the cigar you want to make. Now begins the process of actually making the cigar. Mm -hmm. And the first step in that process is called bunching. And basically bunching is when you take the various filler leaves that make up the blend and you bunch them together and wrap them in a binder. Interestingly, what, there's... What's a binder? A binder is... <laughs> for, I know what it is. For the audience. Yeah, for the audience. For our, yeah. our viewing audience. For our viewing audience, a binder is a leaf that's designed to burn at a very steady rate to hold the bunch tobacco filler together. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's typically very similar to a wrapper leaf, except it's usually thicker, and okay. it's not as aesthetically pleasing, so you don't use it as a wrapper. Does it come from a specific part on the plant? 
that varies very yeah. widely because you can use binder to change the flavor of the cigar. And it's typically the slowest burning leaf right. within the whole mix. Mm -hmm. But bunching is not as simple and straightforward as you might think. Uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, the way you bunch the tobacco has more to do with how that cigar is going to smoke than any other single element. Is it going to draw right? Is it going to have soft spots? Is it going to canoe? Or is it just going to put out tons of smoke and burn nice and slow? All of that comes out of the way that it's bunched. And there are many different ways to do that. Um, the most common way right now is what's called machine bunching. It's not a machine-made cigar, it's machine bunching, but that is not the kind of machine that you might think. The bunching machine that rollers mostly use, and uh, you, there'll be a picture of it, but it looks almost like the little machines that you use to make your own cigarettes. It's got a belt and you lay the, the tobacco into it, and you pull that belt, and it rolls the tobacco and tightens it. And then they take it out of that bunching machine and put it in the, in the binder. So that's one method. Can you vary the, the tightness of the, the roll? Yeah, there, there are little uh, knurled screws on either side okay. of the buncher that allow you to tighten it or loosen it. Okay. So that, and it also, it varies by country. In Honduras, for example, the buncher is not the same person as the roller. They work in teams. Right. Right. So the two of them will sit at a table together, and one of them is constantly bunching and putting the, the bunches into the into the binder and then into the molds, and we'll talk about molds next week. That's, a, that's just a strictly Honduran thing? It's mostly or Honduran, most a little bit in Nicaragua, but in most of the other cigar-producing countries, instead of working in teams... One person will make the bunches, put them in the molds, and then take other cigars out of the molds and put on the wrappers. No kidding. Oh, cool. oh, is there any disadvantage or advantage of two man or, or two person? I two person. Say. There's yeah. a lot of them. Per yeah, I know. I've been to a lot of factories. So, I mean, do you see any advantage of that two over one? Um, I don't really see an advantage to that, except if you're using the bunching machine. Right that person on the team can crank out a whole lot of bunches yeah. really fast, right. much faster than a rapper can sit and, uh, you know, a torch door to actually finish, finish the it, cigars. Yeah. Uh, but that's not the only method. Uh, there is conventional hand bunching. It's also called booking. booking yeah. And the reason it's called booking is the roller will actually take the individual leaves of filler and fold them over each other then lay them in their palm and roll the whole thing together and then put that in a binder. The third method is a very old method. It comes from Cuba. It's old school, although a few people have yeah. started doing it again. Yeah. And that's called N2-bar rolling or N2-bar bunching. And in that case, instead of doing the booking method, what the roller will do is take each of the individual leaves that go into the filler and roll that leaf by itself into a little tube, like a straw. And they'll take all of the straws that make up the filler of the cigar and bunch those together and wrap that in a binder. Obviously, that's much more time-consuming. It's much more of a, uh, a craft that you have to master. So it's a more expensive way to go, but there are some real advantages to using the N2 bar method because it allows the <coughs> air to move through each of the filler leaves individually. It allows that air to carry more flavor through to you, and it makes for a better draw all right. the way through the cigar. Right. So which one is like is there one better than the other, or like one you prefer? Like which one do you prefer? Uh, I personally prefer booking, and I am not a big fan of the bunching machine, okay. although it is the most yeah. common method. I'm just not a big fan of it because I like everything to be by hand. Yeah. And in Ecuador, at my factory, we don't use teams. Everything is done by one well, person man, yeah. at a time. Nice. And it's all booking. We don't do n bar and we don't use the machine. But doesn't n bar lead to almost no plug cigars? 
if it's done by someone who knows what they're doing, a skilled roller Obviously. making an into bar cigar, it will never be plugged. Yeah. But it's not very forgiving. So oh, yeah, okay. a roller that yeah. isn't really up to snuff trying to do an into bar, you're going to have a mess. A golf ball full of straw. Yeah. If you're lucky. <laughs> Is that so why he's mad at his wife or something like that. Um, or, or husband. Or husband. Is that why so few companies use that method? No, I think the reason most, uh, why so few use it is that it, it is more time consuming, it is more expensive, and since fewer people know how to do it, right. there isn't a labor pool of guys that are just ready to do an into bar. Gotcha. Well, that was most informative, as always. Thank you very much. And we'll Thank you, Paul. I was oh, done, and okay. ne next week we'll talk about what happens to the cigar after it's in a binder, because that's a whole. There's a whole another thing. It's it's almost a cigar. Almost, 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 almost. a cigar. Wow. All right. It actually can be smoked at that point. Yeah, yeah we're, we're going to talk that. about now. Who is your favorite actor who smokes cigars? Can I go Rob first? Pascucci. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> wait, 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 Favorite actors who smoke cigars. Yeah, Not just favorite. any old actor right, that exactly. smokes cigars. Thanks, my Scott, my favorite actor who smokes a cigar. Does anybody want to start I would off? like to go first. Um, yeah, yeah. My favorite actor is Charlie Sheen. I love him. Um, I didn't really know that he smoked cigars until I watched Two and a Half Men, which was one of my favorite shows. And, um, you know, he just makes cigar smoking look cool, you know, and tasty. And It is cool. Well, it is. I'm just, it I is said tasty. he made it look cool. You know, Two and a Half Men came out in, what, 2002? Please. And I was young, you know, then. So... It, I was. I'm still young, but, you know, a little bit younger. <laughs> and it just made it look like, oh, I want to try that cigar, you know? So yeah. it's Charlie Sheen's fault that you're a cigar yes, smoker today? Yeah, it's Charlie Sheen's fault. Thank you, Charlie Sheen. <laughs> I like Al Pacino in uh, Scarface. Yeah. He's so sick. A cigar. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. oh, really? <laughs> yeah. He always had a cigar in his mouth. Oh, yeah. I've seen go, that way anyway. I'll go with, Andy, I'll go with Andy Garcia just because yeah. I love the... The, the movie The Lost City. Lost City. Of course, yeah. there's a cigar named after it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a fantastic Great cigar. cigar. Absolutely. I don't yeah. know if you've ever seen that movie, but it's it's a fantastic movie. Is it? I've never seen oh, it. Really What's the movie called again? Uh, the, the Lost, Lost City. City. Just like oh. this, just like the cigar we have. Yeah. yeah, it was. And they the, how they made the cigar was they they took all the and, um, Carlito Fuente grew tobacco specifically for this movie, and they cultivated after the movie they cultivated the tobacco and they made the the cigar from it. Cool. But it is yeah, a, it's is a really, really good movie. I'll throw in my favorite. Arnold. Oh, Arnold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Say that again. Arnold. <laughs> he sounds just like him. He does. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Sure. sure. Say, I'll be back. I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. That was that bad. Yeah. Was, that was <laughs> pretty bad. Not quite that good. Was, uh, <laughs> you're not ready for your turn yeah. as the Ashmanator. The yeah. Ashmanator. <laughs> well, I, I, don't think, I don't think there's a... a, a Hollywood celebrity who's done more for cigars than Arnold. Arnold well, Sylvester yeah. Stallone. Yeah, yeah Sylvester Stallone. How about, how about that Clint Eastwood? Yeah. Well, well, he's done a lot for those little domestic. Yeah, but it's still a cigar. The stuff we kind of looked at our nose. The ones that I like? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, those. <laughs> yes. Well, I got to come from deep left field. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Because my favorite cigar smoking actor is Kathy Bates. Oh, uh, that's cool. Which, oh, that's which cool. sounds really weird, but if you're a Charlie Sheen to an yeah. Men fan, yeah. you might remember yeah. that there was an episode, one of the first episodes after Charlie Sheen left the show, where his brother Alan is right. haunted by the ghost of Charlie, yeah. and the that ghost of Charlie is played by Kathy, Kathy Bates, Bates, who yeah. sits around swilling bourbon and oh, scotch yeah. and smoking cigars. Yeah, I saw that episode. <laughs> I actually saw that episode. Oh, that's funny. It was so hysterical. One episode. That's got to be was hysterical. hysterical. I think she, it was on this year. Yes, yeah. and yeah. She, she's she's really good. I mean, in general, as an yeah. actress, yeah, she's really she's good. Awesome. And she really looked natural smoking the cigar. Really? She wasn't forcing it. Yeah. Speaking of two and a half men, Demi Moore. Demi Moore? Yeah, she smokes cigar. Yeah, yeah. 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 Remember, the cigar aficionado used to have, uh, they had Bruce Willis on the cover, right. there's another right. big cigar, right. and Demi Moore was on the, oh, actually, no, she, she, she was on the, she was on the cover, and he was yeah, on, he was, yeah. on the back yeah. cover. But didn't she, wasn't in the movie, the the Charlie Angel movie, didn't she have a cigar? I could have sworn I she had a cigar in that movie. I know no. she had her big guns, but 
I guess one she has a Gina cigar. Gershon, she's another cigar smoker. Oh, oh, she? yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. She was on wait, the cover gonna, of Cigar Fishing Out. We're going to go to that level. How about Gabby Hayes? Sonia Hemp. It's only a matter of time, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm serious. Gabby Hayes smokes cigars. I believe it. Mark Gable smokes cigars. Yeah. Does that mean I'm just old? Mm -hmm. yeah. We've all heard of these people, correct? Mm -hmm. We have. How about Milton Berle? Milton Berle was a big time cigar George Burns. George Burns. Oh, what about the actor comedian guy with the glasses? Groucho. Groucho Mark. Thank you. Good for the old books. Wow. Thank you. I like when Rob's impressed with my knowledge. A little bit. A little bit. He won't admit it, but he often is. No. Yeah, uh, he is. Well, I think uh, we covered that subject pretty well. I think it's time to uh, review our cigar. Wow. That's which it. is what? I love the which way is, you pronounce it. Do so you really? It. Oh, the I love Flor de las Antillas. Oh, is that? Man, Thank that's, you. You know I'm a little Spanish. Yeah, I know. Hence the name, Tia. Ah. So why don't we start out? Let's you start out. Okay. Um, at first, when I lit it up, I was gonna put it down, but I really think, you know, as you keep smoking, it gets a lot milder. Um, not too much, but just enough. That white pepper taste kind of goes away a little bit. And like a sweet flavor comes in. Um, not something I would pick up every day, but I'd take this to the bar and smoke. Did which I just say which that? Bar? Did. Which I bar? don't want to plug the bar yet, because I'm uh -oh. gonna tell them I'm gonna plug uh -oh. the bar. Uh -oh. So we'll there see, you go. we'll see if we uh -oh. get and we won't talk about, about And we won't talk about barbecue barbecue oh, either. Wow. Yeah, when pigs uh, fly. When pigs fly. <laughs> Scott? There's a reason this was the number one cigar of the year. It, it, if, you're, if you're into the ratings, it got a 96. It is a fantastic cigar. I, I love everything made by Dom Pepin, or my father. Uh, it started off, just like we described earlier, it started off with like a blast of pepper. Um, and then right after that, I started to get some really, I still have it actually, some really sweet flavors. Um, this, is, this is in one of my top 10 cigars. Cool. Well, I have to completely agree with you. Uh, I think this is the best cigar that Pepin puts out. And the reason that I like it so much is it's not quite as powerful or heavy as most of his other stuff, but it's way, way more complex and engaging. It, it, it's constantly changing the mm -hmm. whole time you smoke it. Yeah. Rob? Yeah, I, I agree. I, uh, I think this is the best cigar Don Pepin makes. Um, you do get that big blast of power in the beginning, which I normally don't like, but then the way it smooths out and becomes real complex, uh, it's just fantastic and it really gets to my uh, flavor profile. As full of a, of a strength that it has, it, it really does. It's not overpowering. It's nah. right. not knock no. you, make, make yourself dizzy. It's doesn't very, burn very back smooth. your tongue either. Not, not at all. No, no, not at all. No, no. no. not at all. Well, I mean, there's, you get that there's no harshness of, or bite the to it. Spice, but right. it doesn't burn. It's just. Right. You're just, it's you're not, very, you're not used to very, that spice. It's like, ah, you know. Like. Very, very tasty cigar. Yeah. It is tasty, it's though. tasty cigar. Yeah. Now, yeah. as a new feature. What about you? None of it. Well, I just said it's a very tasty cigar. <laughs> How much more I can add? That's the review. It's, it's wow. complex. It's spicy. It's a little creamy. has a sweet finish. Anything else? Yes. <laughs> it's box pressed, so when you put it's it down, pressed. it won't roll away. Yeah, it won't roll off the table. It doesn't roll off the table. It doesn't roll off the table. And as a, a new box. segment of our show today, we're going to introduce our mystery smoker. We cannot Ooh. see him. And you he is hidden him. out of sight. We really can't see him. We really <laughs> can't see him. And he's going to give you his review. Well, this is definitely a medium to medium full cigar. It has a very, very sweet finish. And it's creamy. And surprisingly, with all that, it still continues to provide that nice peppery flavor that Don Pepin is known for. It's a wonderful cigar. Look how long I held the ash. Oh, wow, look at that. Thank well, you, I think Mr. Smoker. I think it's time now to put thank a... Thank you, Mr. Smoker. Yeah, thank you, thank Mr. You. Smoker. We can't see you, but thank yeah. you. Well, now we, we know But if we are rating the cigar? Should we put... I was just going to say, should we put a number on it? Yes, this? and um, mm. the ratings are... It's one to five One to cigars. five, yeah. Okay? Thank or I guess zero to five. Well, nah, okay, we'll do I, one to five. We're not going to smoke anything. Yeah, that's right. All right, all right. I wanted to be politically correct. I'll go first. I'm going to go... You guys are going to be shocked. 4.50. Wow. wow. Boy, she's a wow. tough grader. Too, Didn't right? I tell you I was going to be, going to be shocked? It's because of the band. I think it's, so. Yeah, the band. The band, the maker band. Scott? Um, <laughs> I have to go 4.75. I can't go quite 5 because it is not the best cigar that Pepin makes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I also go 4.75 just because almost nothing is ever perfect. Too shit. But this is damn close. Yeah. Or darn close, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, I disagree with Scott. Uh, I uh, think this is the best cigar Pepin wow. makes. 
Uh, I give it a 475 also, though. I'm not a huge Pepin guy. I like some of their cigars. This is obviously one of my favorite Pepin cigars. And uh, I would go with a 4.75 and not be embarrassed by it. Wow. Yeah, I think it's a, a, it's a good cigar. It's definitely a good cigar. Wait, what is your favorite? I have to know. What is your uh, favorite Pepin? It's the Tatsuahe Cajono. Ah, is that the first one they ever came out with? No, it's the, actually it's the, the most recent one that came oh, out. Oh, okay. And the Tatsuahe was the, the first Cajono brand of 2012. 2012. Yeah. Right. I think we should go to our... Tatsuahe was the first brand that they ever made. We should made. go to our mystery oh, smoker no. for his ratings. No. We should go to our mystery smoker. Mystery smoker, sign in, please. Uh -huh. <laughs> I see this is a solid four and a half. Give it a 4.50. Wow. Well, you're right, well, you're right with Tia. With on that. I will you, do a Mr. quick tabulation Smoker. of the uh, numerical <laughs> scoring. Remember, it is zero to five, and it comes out at a four point six nine. Wow! Thank you, Matthew. How's that? Four point six nine. All right. Wow! I just want to remind <laughs> everybody: we have seven <laughs> stores in the Philadelphia metropolitan area and Midwestern uh, Jersey somewhere. I don't know where Freehold is. Freehold. Yeah. And you can view <laughs> all our antics, all our stores, all our specials, all our videotape, whatever you want to see, at our website at cccigars.com. That's Double C cigars dot com. Thanks, gang. Thanks for leaving me hanging out there on the island. Mystery smoker. I I think it's time now. We're out of time, actually. So I think it's time to say goodbye. Bye bye for now. Goodbye, and don't forget to go to the website that you just mentioned, and I'll leave your email. Go to our Facebook page and send in pictures of you and your friends smoking cigars. We'll put them on the app. Absolutely. Smoke often and smoke happy, guys. Ciao for now. And thank you very much for your patronage, and we hope to see you in the humidor. Bye-bye, and see you next week. And this weekend's upcoming event is going to be brought to you by Max. Max, take it away. Well, we're doing one of our famous buy five, get six free promotions. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. You buy five, and you get six free? Yeah, that's right, Art. We're going to be selling buy five of any of your favorite cigars that we have on display here, plus many others from Alec Bradley, Romeo and Juliet, Trinidad, La Gloria Cubana, and Rocky Patel, among others. I'm sure there's lots more, right? Yes. Well, how in the world can you do that? Because our crack buying department went all out, beat them up, all those manufacturers and say, what have you got great that we can sell our customers? And by beating them up, I guess we took them in the back and border, border them? Uh, that's against the law. Oh, not if you're Dick Cheney. Oh, did I say that? Yeah, you did. Sorry about that. But I mean, I'm really looking forward. Are we going to have enough people in the stores to oh, ring up all I, these we're sales? We're going to be fully staffed. We're going to have our cigar girls uh, at several of our stores over the weekend. And we're going to have plenty of staff for a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday promotion at all seven Cigar Cigar locations. Well, we work hard at it, as you know. Max, you never cease to amaze me. Did I well, say amaze enough times? I don't know. I hope our customers are going to be amazed. Well, I hope so. Thank you, John.